Hey, Joe Gilder here. This weekend, I've got a tracking session with my band, three-piece band, drums, bass, and me on guitar. And I want to show you how I'm setting up Studio One for a tracking session that involves... 15 tracks of audio, 15 individual microphone cables. Anyway, we're going to talk about all of that today, and I'll show you how to set that up. I am using as my audio interface the Studio Live Mixer. This is this is the 32SX. I've got basically the couple previous versions of this mixer. Um, 24 faders, a whole bunch of inputs on the back, um, and that's what I'm using today. But I'm going to start this from scratch to show you exactly how I would set this up. actually set this up yesterday and then realized this would be good to show folks on the YouTube channel, so I'm setting up here again for you. So let's call this new tracking song. You may wonder, what does tracking session mean? Uh, it's just a recording session. It's a, Maybe it's a Nashville term, I'm not sure, but tracking typically we're recording the, the the core tracks of the song. So if this was a proper session where we're planning just to record drums, bass, and guitar today, and then overdub more guitars and keyboards and vocals later, that'd be the difference. It's tracking sessions, overdub sessions, if that makes sense. All right, we'll call this the new tracking song. Uh, my mixer is set to 44.1. Uh, this all looks fine. And let's hit OK. And this, using just the record and mix template, which is blank, which is a good place to start for showing you this. If I open up the mixer, there ain't nothing down here, but we're going to go in and do some work inside our I.O. setup here, which is, in case you didn't know, you can get there a couple of different ways, but the easiest way is to open up the mixer and click on this, I.O., which stands for Input Output. This is how we set up our inputs and our outputs for our system. Okay, so this is... Your system will look different depending on what interface you have plugged in, but what the 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 way it works is universal, and you can set this up exactly how you want. So whatever this is for your inputs and your outputs, we can actually just completely like get rid of all of it if we want to and start from scratch, which is what I'm going to do here, just to give you an idea. So you may think, what's happening here? I've done a whole video on the the way I/O setup works, but. It shows me the interface that I have connected. So the name of your interface will be here. If it's a Personas interface, it'll show you an image too, which is kind of neat. Um, and then over here, it's showing me literally like what the computer looks down. It looks down the USB cable and sees that there are 64 channels of audio available to come into this, into the computer. So this particular mixer has like 24 microphone preamps, but then it can be expanded using AVB and digital connections to get up to 64 channels of audio coming in on one USB cable. I still That still boggles the mind. Um, but the way Studio One works is while I may have 64 channels available on the interface, I'm not using 64. Most home studios, I think, are probably not using 64. I only need a handful. In this instance, I need maybe 16 max. So instead of so, what happens is the 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 list here that you'll see. If we just click add mono, it just adds a bunch of things here. This list is what we see when we go to choose an input for an audio track. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I just have inputs one and two, let's say I only ever record from inputs one and two, and I say okay. And I create a new audio track. Let's make it a mono, a single mono audio track. Make it mono, no preset. We say, okay. When I go to change the input here, the only options it gives me are input one and input two, which is channel one and channel two. Um, those are the only options there. On other systems, you, and I don't know, I know a couple of different DAWs that I've used. When I go to select the input, it literally shows me every possible input on this system, which means this would blow up and show me 64 input possibilities. That's not necessarily wrong. It's just annoying if I only ever really need a couple of inputs. So instead, we give you the option to customize which inputs actually show up on a channel, and we can assign these to wherever we want. So this button is a little grid that lets me change what this input is is being fed from, if that makes sense. We could change this to say vocal mic. If the vocal mic is always in channel three, like mine is, um, then that we could call that vocal mic. It's set to channel three. And when we go to choose our inputs, we can choose vocal mic, and it'll still tell me what channel it is, which is helpful too. So I don't have to have the channel number in the name, but I can choose, this is my input, channel three, which happens to be vocal mic. 
So that's what I'm talking about with this I.O. setup. And we're going to set this up um, for ourselves here. So I'm going to set this uh, Actually, let's just get rid of everything. Hold down Shift, remove them all. Okay. And first, let's just add a bunch of mono channels. So I've got a, a, a little XLR patch bay here with 16 XLR inputs. So that's the most XLRs I'm going to have available to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click this 16 times. So feasibly, you could be done. It's inputs 1 through 16. Good to go. Problem is, a couple of my channels I want to set up as stereo. My overheads, which are left and right. My room mics, which... I think I want to set up as just a stereo channel versus separate left and right because I've got, I literally have a microphone sitting on the desk over here and a microphone sitting on a bookshelf over there as my room mics because I ran out of mic stands. Um, I think it might be cool. We'll see. I may want to be able to control those separately, but I might want to record them as a stereo track. And then what else? Oh, my um, my electric guitar is going through a, a, a amp on the amp on the floor with XLR outputs that's coming in stereo. So I want to record that as stereo as well. So I need a couple of stereo inputs. I really only need three based on what I just said. So if I do this currently right now, I've got 16 mono inputs set up in my system. If I come over here and I turn this into a stereo track by clicking on this button there, and then I go to try to select inputs there is no, there's no way for me to select inputs like my overheads are on channels 9 and 10. I can only select one or the other. There's no stereo inputs for me to choose. Um, so I have to set those up in the I.O. setup. So I just come over here. I click Add Stereo. It adds a few more things here. And I'm going to rename these. This is input 9-10. And then my guitar... Amp modeler is plugged into 15 and 16. And then this could be the rooms, which is input 11 and 12. Now, I could name these. I like, this is just, I've just gotten used to just naming it input. I could call this guitar, you know, guitar rooms overheads if I wanted. Um, but just for the sake of ease of use. So I need this to be on 9 and 10. I need this to be on... Oh, wait, that's not 9 and 10. <laughs> uh, that's 9 and 10. We can see it here, but also if we hover, it tells me what I'm what I'm on right now. The uh, 15 and 16, I think, is here. And then 11 and 12 should be here. So now I say OK. And if I just create a new stereo track, or if I just come to this track, now I can see there are several mono inputs available. And now at the bottom, I've got these three stereo inputs as well, which I can assign to this. So now I've got all my different different inputs available to me. You can also do the same thing for outputs. If you're going to use multiple outputs for headphone mixes and things like that, I'm not. We're going to do headphone mixes straight off the board. But if you were, you could set up those and have those assigned to specific outputs. I've got just my main output and then a separate one that I sometimes use to send the click track out to its own dedicated channel. I actually haven't done that in a while either. Uh, so now... We've got all our inputs and outputs set up appropriately. Now let's create the tracks that we want. I'm going to create, let's just come up here. I'm going to hit uh, T. <laughs> I'm so used to doing it, I forget to like, I forget what it actually is. The letter T brings up the add track window. Let's just create, let's see, I know, let's just create 16 actually. We'll, we'll get rid of the ones we don't want. This is actually really fun. So I'm going to create 16 mono tracks. Auto color is fine. And I'm going to set the input of the first one to one. And then check this. I can check the ascending box. And then check out what happens. I hit OK. It creates my 16 tracks. But look, it changed them to input one, input two, input three, input four, and five, all the way up to 16. Now I want to do the same thing for some stereo tracks. So I press T. And we're going to say, call this stereo. This is the name of the track. We can change this later. I only need three stereo tracks. Um, I want it to be stereo. Stereo, and I want the first one to be 9 and 10. Yep, that makes sense. And then if I say ascending on that as well, it should create, yep, it did, three... Wait, hang on. Wait, that's not my stereo tracks. Where'd my stereo tracks go? Oh, they're right here. For some reason, they're right here in the middle. I guess they went to the right of whichever one was selected. If I put those here, we can see it's inputs 9 and 10, 15, 16, 11, and 12. You may also notice that the record button is enabled. That's because I have this setting turned on, audio input follow selection. I'm going to turn that off. 
because I don't need that right now. Also, I don't need this view, so I'm going to get rid of that, and I don't need this instrument view. going to get rid of that. Okay, so now we're getting closer. We've got all of our, we've got all of our possible inputs here available to us. Uh, now we can come through and we can literally put things in the order that we want. So for example, my kick drum is actually going to be on channel 14 because that's my ADL preamp. So I could put that first. And then uh, give me just a minute and I'm going to order these in the order that I have listed here so you don't have to sit here and watch me reorder them. All right, I've rearranged them. These are the ones that I want to use. We'll set these to red. These are the ones that I actually don't need. So either these are the extras that I didn't need because I'm using 9 and 10 in stereo, 11 and 12, 15, 16 in stereo. So I don't need these specific mono inputs. I created them so I could do that ascending thing. Just have it create them all because it's easy just to just select these and press Shift T to just delete those tracks. Gone, bye bye, forever. Now I've got the tracks that I need. Uh, but the only problem now is the names aren't helpful. Mono 14 is a terrible name for a track. So let's go through <clears throat> and name these. There's a quick way to name them in case you didn't know. Double click on the name and type in what it is. This is kick in and then press tab and it'll go through every channel. So I can quickly name all of these. Let me fast forward this for you. Okay, cool. There was uh, channels one and two I don't need as well because I use those for my playback from Studio One. So I deleted those channels. But now I've got everything. Here are my drums. Here's my bass. Here's my, my guitar. And then here is a scratch vocal in case I want to track some vocals while I'm there as well. These are the tracks that I need, which is only 11 tracks and only two, four, six plus it's a lot of tracks of audio but i've got all these going how many okay hang on one there's six eight ten twelve so fourteen if i got fourteen pieces of audio coming into my system simultaneously that's pretty cool and those are all ready to go um so basically i could start recording now i'm going to do a couple of extra things because i know i'm going to want this in the future i'm going to do things like pack these into a folder so pack folder, call this drums, come over here and say add a bus channel and change this of course to blue, the color of drums. Uh, bass, I'm gonna do the same thing even though it's just one track. We may record multiple tracks of bass. If he's, he's got a pedal board with all kinds of cool sounds, we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll make that red and we'll say add a bus channel. Now technically, just so you're just so you know, I would have done, I would have created this session starting from my template, my mixing template, which already has these folders and buses created. So I would have started from there, opened up the IO setup, deleted everything and kind of rebuilt it from there. That's just the way I like to do it. Um, but it would have had all these folders in place, which would have saved us a tiny bit of time. Uh, I like that color, and then vocal, we'll pack a folder for the vocals as well, because I'm always going to, Joe Gilder's going to have more than one vocal track, that's a given, and we'll make that yellow, of course, and send that, uh, create a bus for that as well. So now we've got our tracks, if we expand these out, this is starting to look like a session, and when I'm ready to go, I can just hit the record enable on each of these folders, and we're good to go, recording all of this and everybody's happy, and we're going to make some rock and roll history. <laughs> Maybe not history, but it's going to be fun. And yeah, we're good to go. So now, a couple of pieces of advice from this point. <clears throat> when you get things set up like you want, before you press record, save this as something else. Either save it as a template. That's what I would probably do. We get everybody here. We set everything up. We make sure if we add any tracks that we need, things like that. Then I'll come up to save as template. And I'll save this as just maybe with a date, like tracking day, so that it saves, I can't type, it saves that as a template that I can pull up. So if it's, this is a, this particular tracking day, we're only recording one song, so I don't need to do that. But if we were going to do five songs, once this is set up, save it as a template. So now I can pull this up and we're done with song one. I close that, open up a new song using that template. It's a fresh blank song with no audio files in it. And we're off to the races. All right. Hope this was helpful for you. If you have your own tracking session, they It may seem overwhelming, but once you have all the equipment to do a tracking session, so I had to buy, you can't see them, but they're all set up on stands. There's a bunch of microphones and stands and cables. That stuff takes money to buy one time, then you can reuse them. So all these mics and cables that I'm using for all this, all the cables that are running strewn about the studio, I only had to really buy those once 
And that was that was painful. But once I had them, now I can do tracking sessions whenever I want, which is kind of fun. So if you've never done a full-on tracking session with drums, bass, guitar, uh, if you have an interface that will accommodate it, at least eight inputs. If not, I've got, like, like you saw, I've got 14 inputs going at once. Um, it's a really fun time, and Studio One handles it like a breeze. All right, that's it. See ya.